Good day. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to look at integer powers of complex numbers. Now in this topic we will define integer powers of a complex number. We will derive the formula mostly from the polar representation. We will then look at a geometric interpretation of powers of complex numbers, and then observe some properties. Now, given a z is equal to alpha plus beta j, or the magnitude of z phase theta for an appropriate theta, then for an integer n we will define z to the n as, well if n is less than zero, we will raise the reciprocal of z to negative n. If n is equal to zero, the result is one, and if n is greater than zero, it will be z times z to the n minus one. We could define z to the n as just z multiplied by itself n times, but this is a recursive definition of z to the n. How do you calculate z to the 5? Well, you calculate z to the 4 and multiply that by z. How do you calculate z to the 4? You mul calculate z to the 3 and multiply that by z. How do you calculate z3? Well, you get the idea. Now the reciprocal is reasonably straightforward. Um, let's say we wanted to calculate 1.6 plus 1.2j raised to the power negative 10. Well that would be the same as calculating the reciprocal of 1.6 plus 1.2j which is 0 0.4 minus 0 0.3j and raising that to the power 10. Note that 0 to the 0 is still defined as 1 0 to the n is equal to 0 if n is greater than 0, and 0 to the n is not defined if n is less than 0. Now, if z is equal to its, its magnitude phase theta, observe that z squared is z times z, which is the product of these two representations. But wait a second, multiplying the magnitudes, adding the angles, we get that it is the magnitude squared phase to theta. Z to 3 is just z times z squared, which is that product there. Multiplying the magnitudes and adding the angles, we get, oh, magnitude cubed, phase 3 theta. Similarly, if z is its magnitude phase theta, its reciprocal is the reciprocal of the magnitude phase negative theta. So if we wanted to calculate z to the power negative 2, that's this reciprocal times the reciprocal, which is that product that you can see there. Multiply the two magnitudes, add the angles, and we get that that is the magnitude raised to the power negative 2 phase negative 2 theta. You can do the same thing with z to the negative 3, and we get that the result is the magnitude raised to the power negative 3 phase negative 3 theta. Oh should suggest that z to the n should really be calculable as the magnitude raised to the power n phase n theta for all integer values of n. What's even cooler is that we could actually use this to define z to the alpha for any real alpha as well. But in this course, we're going to restrict ourselves to polynomials, and polynomials only require integer exponents. You can explore this later if you want on your own. As an example, if z is 1 plus j, which is root 2 phase pi over 4, then z squared is that expression, which when worked out is 2j z cubed is again that expression which when worked out is negative 2 plus 2j z to the fourth is negative 4 because again the angle is 4 times pi over 4 which is an angle of pi which represents a negative number the magnitude is root 2 to the power 4 which is 4 so a negative number that has magnitude 4 is negative 4. And finally, z to the 5 is negative 4 minus 4j. 
Similarly, the reciprocal of 1 plus j is a half minus a half j. So z to the negative 2 is negative a half j. z to the negative 3 is minus a quarter minus a quarter j. z to the fourth can be worked out to be negative one quarter. And z to the negative 5 is negative one eighth plus one eighth j. Notice that z to the n and z to the negative n actually are multiplicative inverses of each other, and you would expect that. z squared is 2j, z to the negative 2 is negative a half j. Multiply these together, you get 1. z cubed is negative 2 plus 2j, z to the negative 3 is negative a quarter minus a quarter j. Multiply those two together, again, you get a value of 1 z to the fourth is negative a quarter, z to the negative four is negative one quarter. Multiply those two together, yes, you still get one. And the same is true for z to the five times z to the negative five. That product still is one. So we've shown this, but let's actually prove it. Now, how do we prove this? Well, the theorem is that z to the n is a magnitude of z raised to the power n phase n theta. When n is equal to 0, z to the 0 is equal to the magnitude raised to the power 0 phase 0 times theta. Well, anything raised to the power 0 is 1 phase 0. That is equal to 1. So the formula is correct when n is equal to 0. Assume that the formula is correct for an arbitrary value of n greater than or equal to 0. That is, let us assume that z to the n is indeed equal to the magnitude of z to the n phase n theta. Then z to the n plus 1 is equal to z times z to the n from the formula you see in the top right hand corner. But by assumption, z to the n is the magnitude to the raised to the power n phase n theta. So now multiplying those two together, we get the magnitude of z times the magnitude of z to the n phase theta plus n theta, and that's just the magnitude of z raised to the power n plus 1 phase n plus 1 all times theta. Thus, by the process of mathematical induction, the statement above is true for all integer values of n, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay, so far so good, but we've only proved it for positive values, or non-negative integers. Next, let's consider negative integers. Let us assume that negative n is less than 0, so n is a positive value like 5, negative n would therefore be a negative integer. Now, in this case, the polar representation remains unchanged. z to the negative n is the magnitude of z raised to the power negative n phase negative n theta. The formula, however, says that if negative n is less than 0, we instead calculate the reciprocal raised to the power n. That's equal to the reciprocal raised to the power negative 1 phase negative theta raised to the positive integer n. But we already have that formula from the previous page. That's equal to the reciprocal of the magnitude raised to the power n phase n times negative theta. And that's just equal to the reciprocal raised to the power negative n phase negative n theta. Thus, the formula is also true for all negative integers, and therefore the formula is correct for all integer values of n. Let's look at a geometric interpretation of integer powers of a complex number. As you can see, this actually seems to almost form a spiral. So here we see 
powers of z equals 1 plus j. Now, the magnitude of z is equal to root 2, that's greater than 1. So successively higher powers of z will have successively larger magnitudes. However, you will notice that the angle increases by a fixed amount. z to the 0 has an angle of 0, z equals z to the 1 has an angle of 45 degrees, z squared, angle of 90 degrees, z cubed, angle of 135 degrees, z to the 4th, angle of 180 degrees, and z to the 5th, an angle of 225 degrees. On the other hand, negative powers of z get smaller and smaller and spiral into zero, but the angle between successive powers continues to remain to be 45 degrees. Now this spiral actually has a specific name. You can look it up on your own time. It's called a logarithmic spiral. Now here we see powers of w is equal to 0 0.75 minus 0 0.25j. Now the magnitude of w is root 10 over 4, and that's less than 1 in absolute value. Therefore, successively larger powers of w will spiral in towards 0, while successively smaller or negative, larger negative powers of w will spiral out towards infinity. As you can see, the reciprocal of w has magnitude greater than 1. However, once again, if you look closely, you will see that the difference in the angle between successive powers in both directions is always the same fixed amount. Now, here's an interesting question. What happens if the magnitude of z is equal to 1? For example, here we see z is equal to 0 0.6 plus 0 0.8j. The magnitude of z is equal to 1. Therefore, all successive powers, or in fact, all integer powers of z will remain on the unit circle. Here you can see z. z squared is a little bit to the left of j. z cubed, z to the fourth, z to the five, z to the sixth, z to the seventh, and finally close to z but not directly there is z to the eighth. And you will notice that z to the eighth is a rational number, but it's not going to be ever repeated again. No two integer powers of z will ever be equal because the angle of z here happens to be an irrational multiple of 2 pi, and therefore you will never see any repetition. Specifically here, the angle is approximately 53.13 degrees, therefore z to the n is just one phase, n times 53.13 degrees. Theorem. The magnitude of z to the n is the magnitude of z raised to the power n. Well, as for a proof, it's more or less obvious from the polar representation of integer powers, so I'll leave it at that. If z is equal to alpha plus 0j is a positive real number, then z to the n is equal to alpha to the n. That is, if z is a real number, then we expect integer powers of z to match the values that the real value to the power n would also be. So if z is equal to alpha plus 0j, where alpha is greater than 0, then the magnitude of z is the magnitude of alpha, and that's just equal to alpha. So z is equal to alpha phase theta, uh, phase 0. Alpha to the n is therefore alpha to the n phase n times 0, but n times 0 is 0, and so therefore that is the real number alpha to the n. If z is equal to negative alpha plus 0j is a negative real number, then z to the n is equal to 
negative alpha raised to the power n. Proof. If z is equal to negative alpha plus 0j, where alpha is greater than 0, then the magnitude of z is the magnitude of alpha, which is still alpha, so z is equal to alpha phase pi. Therefore, z to the n is equal to alpha to the n phase n pi. But converting that to rectangular representation is alpha to the n cos n pi plus sine of n pi j. Now, wait a second. Sine of n pi for integer values of n is always equal to 0, so there is no imaginary part. Cos of n pi... Well, cos of 0 is 1, cos of pi is negative 1, cos of 2 pi is 1, cos of 3 pi is negative 1. Cos of n pi is just negative 1 raised to the power n. And combining those, we get that it is equal to alpha times negative 1 all raised to the power n, which is negative alpha to the n. Theorem. Z to the m times z to the n is z to the m plus n. You already know that this is true for real numbers. Let's show that it's true for complex numbers as well. Again, it's quite straightforward. We can just represent both powers as their polar representation. Multiplying those two together, we just take the product of the magnitudes and add the angles. But that's just equal to the magnitude raised to the power m plus n phase m plus n all times theta. But that, by definition, is z to the m plus n. Thus, we're done. So in this topic, we've introduced integer powers of complex numbers. We've used the same definition as for integer powers of real numbers, and we derived a nice formula using the polar representation. We saw the geometric interpretation and saw some very beautiful logarithmic spirals. We also saw a number of properties of integer powers of n. Here are some references, acknowledgments, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!